Hey everybody, it's this man Sam or Ballistic and today we're doing a top, it's not even like a top 10, it's kind of just all of the things, all of the games I played this year. Uh, in total I played 12, so it's not like a top 10 or anything like that, I'm just going to go over all of the games I played and order them for my least favorite, because you know, I'm, I don't like doing top 10 things, because... There, there are some great movies in uh, not movies. There are some. Well, I'm, I'll talk about that for a second too. There are some great movies. I've seen 17 movies this year, I think, or 19, 19, yeah. And some of the ones that aren't in the 10, I still like a lot. So I'd like to talk about those. But you know, in gaming, there's only 12. So I, I just figured like whatever. It's top 12 list. Ooh. Uh, so this is the first year we're doing this. I was gonna do it last year, but I didn't get around to it, and I kind of was like. I almost didn't do this one because it is later than I wanted it to be. I wanted to do it in actually 2014, but now it's 2015 and yay! Exciting! So, okay, let's just get this started. Let's do this shit, dogs. Oh my god. Okay, so first, uh, number 12 comes Thief. Thief was like, I don't know, it wasn't bad. Let's see, that's the thing. Like, the my last game this year wasn't bad. It was just like, not very good. I mean, it was really random the controls fell a little off too the stealth was weird didn't really work that well in my opinion story wise too it was kind of weak uh, especially uh, the, um, when a game's ending like makes or breaks it is it's like that's the most most of the time games have that especially this year for some fucking reason every ending to a game blows dicks like that one was kind of just so weak and like, the story kind of didn't mean anything, and ooh, there was like a plot twist that he totally got. And the main bad guy, quote unquote, which was that bald mustache dude, in my opinion, kind of was not that big a deal. Like, he seriously kind of wasn't a big threat. And I, I don't know, it's just overall, I mean, the whole story, the whole game, oh shit, what was that? The whole story of the game, not very good. I don't know, just, it, it was decent. It was uh, my least favorite, so you can take it like that, where it's not up there on my list, definitely. Number 11 goes to Broken Age. And, okay, this was higher on my list earlier in the year. I did quite enjoy Act 1 of Broken Age. However, Double Fine's attitude and just general way of going towards Act 2 has been fucking ridiculous. Like, it hasn't come out yet. Which, it was supposed to come out by the end of 2014. They are now shooting, apparently, for spring? What the fuck is Act 2 take? Why is it taking so long? I feel like they should have had Act 2 well into development before losing Act 1. And apparently, okay, Act 1 was, I think, four hours long, I'll say. They want to make Act 2, like, triple that, apparently, or some shit. Why? Stop doing that. I, ju I would like it to be four hours long. I'd like to be just a chill game to play four hours. That's That was fine for me. I liked the Act 1. It was fine. Other than that, though, like, the story was decent. It was good, yeah. Uh, the plot twist at the end fucking got me. I didn't see that coming at all. So, I mean, like, there I, I just don't... The only reason it's so low now is because it's not complete. It fucking didn't finish. Will I put Act 2? on my list next year for 2015? I won't, because it's the game, the game, that's why Wolf Among Us isn't on this list, because it came out the year before. It would be high up on that list too, but the whole game, it started the year before. This is not gonna be in the 2016, not 2016, 2015 top 10 list, because fuck that. Like, no, it's a 2014 game that just didn't finish, and it might not finish ever. Oh God, that would be tragic. <laughs> anyway, number 10, Goes to Assassin's Creed Unity. <sighs> okay. This is also a game I kind of have a love-hate relationship with. It's an Assassin's Creed game, and I like it for that. But the controls, the glitches in the game are just so fucking crazy. I will give it a, a plus on the fact that it looks beautiful and sometimes handles pretty well. So far, I haven't beaten the game yet. Uh, the story is pretty good. I don't know, though. It's just... <laughs> the glitches and... Everything else in the game, eh. I just, I, I don't know. It kind of is a, a huge disappointment to me because it was a game, it was, that was a game where it was either going to be I'll Get That or Shadows of Mordor. And I heard Shadows of Mordor was so fucking good and I was like, I regret getting this fucking game then. You know what I mean? 
you can't you don't have that kind of foresight in your life but when some shit like that happens it's just so tragic because you're like oh i made a fucking i done goofed and it's so shitty for that kind of thing to happen and now moving on to number nine we have lego movie video game this is where the list becomes not like i didn't I didn't hate the game. I don't really have a lot of negatives to say about Lego Movie Video Game. Uh, I mean, the way that they've set up the new Lego games, where it's kind of open world now, the way they did in Lego Movie Video Game isn't as much as like Lego Marvel Super Heroes was. So, I mean, that was kind of a disappointment. But overall, like the story was good because I liked the Lego Movie Video. I liked the Lego Movie in general, so the story was good. Uh, my only problem with it, really, is that it glitched a lot. Like, they had a hell of a lot of glitches and they didn't bother fixing them at all. So that was a bit of a problem, but, you know, you'll deal with that kind of thing. Uh, like, for example, there was a part where, because me and my girlfriend play the, play the game. There was a part when we were trying to get a collectible, but it was, like, the thing that we had to get wasn't there in our game. And it was, like, fucking, cr and it annoyed the shit out of us because it was the last thing we needed. So annoying, but, I mean, overall, good game. I don't know what it is. That game has a fucking amazing LEGO graphics. For some reason, I'm just stuck on that. Like, the movement of that game just is beautiful to me. I just couldn't get over that. Number eight. I don't know if this counts as its own game. I put it on the list because I think it kind of does. But uh, Outlast Whistleblower, which is kind of DLC for Outlast, I know. But I feel like it was different enough. Like, it revamped stuff that is kind of okay to say it's different. Uh, Outlast Whistleblower was good for a horror game. I feel like Outlast is probably one of my favorite horror games of all time. And, uh, I liked how this one kind of went in between Outlast in general. Like, I figured it was going to be a total prequel. Like, you would be set, like, right before, if anything. But it, it's, like, right with everything. Like, normally happening. So that was pretty cool. Uh, story was good. Villains were, like, normal villains. I mean, it's the same gameplay, basically, as Outlast. But, I don't know. This one gave me a lot of more jump scares. If you want, you can go check out, as for all the games on this list, basically, all of these games that I'm talking about have been on the channel, because every game I get, I record. So, uh, yeah, it's good, you can go check that out, though, because there's a lot of jump scares, me and my brother played it. And that was, uh, I mean, like, that's fun, like, that's kind of a game, if I played it myself, I wouldn't like it as much, but it's fun to play with other people around. So, yeah, it's, it's number nine on that list, I mean, it's number eight. Okay, another horror game for some reason. Uh, at number seven comes Alien Isolation. So this game I was really hyped for. I do love the Alien franchise. Maybe not the last two movies, but you know, it's a it's a sci what would you call it? Sci-fi horror, I guess. It's a sci-fi horror franchise that I fucking love to death. And then this game comes out. Well, I should pre preface this with Aliens: Colonial Marines came out. And that was a piece of shit game. And. uh... So then this game was announced, and it looked fucking amazing. Like, it pulled an Aliens Colonial Marines out of everyone's ass. And, like, I don't know, it fucking wasn't... It wasn't what it promised, but it still lived up to, like, some hype where I was like, this is a good game, it's good enough. There were just some moments when I was like, they lied completely about the fact that this alien is, like, super sentient. Like, it's fucking... No, it's scripted completely, basically. Like, there was a moment you can go to episode, like, I think it's 32. Don't quote me on that, though. I'm kind of just pulling that out of my ass. I think it's a 30 episode. The alien literally runs past me. Because it's scripted to run in a certain direction. And it just fucking walks past me like nothing's nothing's different or whatever you want to say. Like, it's ridiculous. That shouldn't happen. Uh, other than that, though, like, the story was good. I didn't like the ending, though, again. Like, the ending to this game, fucking, I was, ah, what? Bullshit. That'll be ending in a couple days, actually. Uh, there's two more episodes as I'm recording this. So, yeah, in a few days. Maybe next week. Uh, the ending to the game, though, just kind of ruins it, almost. Because it's just... it's It was different from what I thought it was going to be. It almost was like, hey, we could do an Aliens... Alien Isolation 2, and I hope they fucking don't. Because I honestly... I want them to wait a long time to do an Aliens game. Because an, an Alien game needs to just relax. We've had one for, like, the last couple years. And I just think it needs to take a break. And we need to get people who actually fucking care about this franchise in a studio. And being like, hey, we're going to make this amazing. Number... Where are we at? Number... Do I not have that? Oh, number six. Destiny. It's sad that this game isn't in my top three. 
Destiny was a game I had hyped for a long fucking time. And I don't know if that's the problem, but Destiny kind of, I don't know, it fell short of my expectations. It's still a great game. I still fucking love it. That You're probably going to see more of that in the channel, like, in 2015. Uh... I don't know, it was just, it felt like there was a lot out of it. And I feel like they should have added all the DLC stuff anyway into the game. Because, like, let's see, the the main storyline, so short and so repetitive. The other stuff you can do, very repetitive in my opinion. I mean, it's, I feel like it just needed more, more to do. There needs to be more planets or some shit, which I hope they add in DLC. Are you kidding me? Um, I'm going to eventually probably get the new DLC, whatever it's called, the uh, Dark Below. But it's $20. Like, what is that shit? It has, like, nothing in it. There's, like, two story missions, and then, like, a multiplayer map, I think? What is that? That's ridiculous. I just don't think that's reasonable. And that's why it's so low on the list. I originally was going to put it higher, but then I was like, I don't like the way this game kind of is doing shit. Like, I kind of... I don't want to have to redo the fucking strikes. I don't want to have to re... It's, it's very much like WoW, but in, in like a dumb way. Because WoW actually has stuff to do that you can just be like, oh, let's fuck around. D Destiny's just like, okay, you can do multiplayer or you can go to a planet and do like random missions and shit. And it's just like, that's not very fun. I just feel like the story or some shit needed to be more. Like, there needed to be more random events that felt like they were just random events you could just do randomly. Because the game just feels so empty basically like there's not a lot to do it feels like borderlands but without the humor which is the fucking best part about borderlands and the only arguably good thing about borderlands at this point so i don't know it's just, it didn't live up to the hype or i don't know i figured it was gonna be a lot better so that's all i'll say about that also quick little thing i figured the area was gonna be bigger like the earth area is so fucking tiny I, I wish there was more, like, the game needs it desperately. Like, I can't wait until the game is completely, like, DLC'd out. I heard they're making Destiny 2 already. Fuck that, you gotta work on Destiny 1, jackass. Are you kidding me? Ugh. Game gets me angry. <laughs> now we're moving on to the top five, and number five goes to Little Big Planet 3. This game, I haven't posted this on the channel yet. It's gonna be coming, hopefully, out. it's gonna be after the seventh, because I need to wait until Nico makes the thumbnail. But... Little Big Planet 3 is great. It's just like the other two, which I'm totally fine with. I love those games to death. They're actually probably some of my favorite games ever. Yeah, I would probably say that. Uh, the only problem, again, is this game was glitchy. It had a few problems in it. Like, I didn't record this, but the final boss fight, uh, your character can disappear randomly, and it's not supposed to happen, definitely. But whenever you try to transform into your other form, I guess, like your sack boy to your odd sock or your whatever... You go invisible, and that is it's impossible to do it at that point. Like, I can't believe I actually, me and Marini actually did that. But, yeah, it was pretty pretty buggy at some points. Then, uh, other than that, though, it's great. I mean, there's a lot of, it's, it's all the people-made stuff, though. Like, that's the best part about the game. I can't, like, the story was actually decent in this one. Like, they actually had some, like, a good story rather than just like, oh, you're just doing random shit. Like, I actually, in the first one, I didn't know there was a story. I didn't know you were actually doing something. I thought you were just going around, like, to the different continents and just experiencing different cultures or some shit. But there was an overall story. See, and, but in this one, it kind of forces it down your throat with cutscenes, which are non-skippable, which is kind of a little eh. But, I mean, whatever. It's still a great game. I, I love it. Uh, number four. Far Cry 4. So, this was higher on my list. This was number two earlier. Then I beat the game. And I was, I don't know, it just didn't end. Like, the climax of that game is so anticlimactic. Nothing really happens. Like, it just kind of ends eventually, and you're just like, oh, sweet. I loved it up until then. Although, I will say, and this is kind of a spoiler for the series, you make choices, like, you side with certain people, like Sabal or Amita. That doesn't mean shit in the end of the game, by the way. Like, the, nothing really changes. Like, it just changes, like, a certain end cinematic. We're like, ooh, something's bad, but like, other than that, like, okay, I'm gonna spoil something, I don't care. There's a part where you go to kill the other person, like, the other leader, and if you had sided with them the whole time, but then you go to kill them, they'll act like you didn't. Like, they'll be like, you fucking asshole, like, I can't believe, like, you never helped me or you supported me. Like, what is that? You can't just go fucking suddenly become asshole like that, like I didn't help you at any point, like, what, the, that's so stupid, I feel like that should have been worked on or something, Ubisoft, like, you kind of had a weak year, I'm not gonna lie, 
But uh, it, it's good. I mean, it's a lot like Far Cry 3, which I can't really hate on because I love... Like, Far Cry 3 was probably my game of the year for that year. But, uh, I mean... It was... Like, right, okay. I, I love the wildlife. I love the random shit that can happen in that game. It's all amazing. And, okay, the gunplay and stuff is still the same, but it's still fucking great. I love it. My only <laughs> gripe, again, is the ending, as well as Ubisoft's lack of faith in a blood dragon 2 i fucking want that so bad do you guys know how much blood dragon rocked that was my well, that might have been my favorite one of my favorite games of what was the year was that was that 2013 that might have been 2013 wasn't it i don't know it's still fucking amazing though i can't believe that like or just 2012 sorry it was amazing and the, the fact that ubisoft's not gonna make it uh, for the second time, I feel like they're missing out because that was an amazing thing they did. Or they might, they should do something like that at least, make a little DLC uh, story thing separately, but make it like the ridiculous story of what's his nuts Rex or some shit. I forget what it is, but it was so fucking good. Uh, other than that, though, yeah, like the main thing I care about in the Far Cry stuff is like the story. There's nothing else to the game really. I mean, the setting is good. Karat was like probably I don't know if it's better than the islands, but. Uh, the character you play, I don't like as much as uh, whatever the guy's name was on Far Cry 3, though. Because he just feels so random. Like, he's not, like, a person. He's just a, the player, basically. In the other one, you were kind of just... You were a dude, and you experienced him growing into a psychopath, basically. In this one, you're just, you just get there, and you're like, Oh, I know how to do all of this already. And it's like, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, I don't get why you know how to do all this shit. And, yeah, so it's, it's still a great game, though. I love it to death. I would probably... It's... It definitely deserves this number four spot. It's Far Cry 4, fourth spot. Oh, that's funny. It's not, it's not Sam Coin. <laughs> uh, number three goes to Advanced Warfare. Literally did not expect this, by the way. I was like, this game... I, I'm hyped every year for a Call of Duty. But this one fucking surprised me. Because this is actually a really good Call of Duty. Over the years, we've had like a lot of less good ones. Ghosts, I didn't hate Ghosts as much as everyone else did. But, I mean... It still wasn't great. I mean, ever since, what, which one was it? I think Modern Warfare 2 was the last, like, oh, yeah. Oh, actually, wait, I'll say Black Ops. Black Ops 1 was, like, the last, fuck, yeah. And that might be because I had a great community of friends that would always play together with Black Ops. And that kind of died down eventually. But, like, it's still, it was, it's still good now that, even though I don't have those people to play with, it's still such a good game. The campaign's ending, again, very weak. But the multiplayer, where the game's main point and focus is, is fucking stellar. I quite like it. I can't, like, I don't know. It might be the fact that it's just good to see new shit from Call of Duty. And that's why it's so high on the list. But it, it's just new and refreshing and a fun thing to play. Uh, it's, it also has me worried, though, for next year. Because next year, if they don't do, like, the EXO shit, like, what are they going to do? Like, how do you make shit different? If the other per person who made the game has made it so different that everyone's like, oh shit, this is the best way to play Call of Duty. Like, what do you do at that point? So that has me worried, but it still doesn't detract from the fact that the game itself is great. I just am like, oh god, Sledgehammer, you screwed over everyone else now. I feel like Sledgehammer should be working on Call of Duty. Maybe take a year break now. Like, we don't need Call of Duty every year since the sales are kind of dropping. Just re release every two years or something, Sledgehammer. Do your best. Do your best. Number two. From this, I'm going to guess you guys are going to get number one, by the way, because if you've heard my ravings, you'll know. Uh, number two is Wolfenstein, The New Order. Fuck! This game was amazing. Can I just say that? This, okay, before the game came out, I literally was always talking, I was talking on White Boy and stuff like, oh yeah, I'm getting that game because it's kind of going to be the Aliens Colonial Marines of this year, because I want a game to just like hate on and be like a bitch of my existence. Fuck if I was wrong. The game is amazing. The gunplay, fucking stellar. Best shooter of the year, definitely. The story itself, fucking, like, what? It was so good. I can't even, um, like, I was like, what? When I started playing, I was like, oh, 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 the first level is fucking bullshit, too. Like, I was like, this is gonna be so shitty. Then fucking every other mission of the game, I was like, whoa. This is pretty legit. I can't wrap my mind around how good this is the story was great the uh the ending though oh my god so that ending fucking almost made me cry I, i'm not gonna lie because it was just beautiful like they have a song that plays i forget what it's called but uh it is truly magical like i can't believe that that's in there there's i hope here's the thing 
Today I heard that the people who are making Doom weren't the people who are making Wolfenstein the New Order, which I was hoping for. So I kind of am less excited for Doom because the people that made that game, I'm like, dude, you have my full support. If you, if Machine Games makes anything else, I feel like I'll buy it because it's just a fucking amazing. Are you kidding me? Like, I can't even fathom. Like, because this game was so good, I knew there'd be a sequel or some shit. Because, like, I think the ratings for the game, too, were, like, fucking stellar. Like, I, before I got the game, I waited until Total Biscuit made a video. And I was like, oh, shit. Total Biscuit, Total Biscuit is probably going to wreck this game, fucking hate on it. It literally also made his number one game of the year. He fucking loved this game. And I, I'm like, damn, that's great. When I saw that, I was like, I have hope for this game. <sighs> There's something about... Killing Nazis on the moon. Killing giant Nazi death robots or some shit that just gets y'all. Yeah, this is great. It's also, I have a thing for over-the-top games. It's a very over-the-top game. And I, I love that about it. It knows that it's ridiculous and it kind of owns it. So yeah, it made number two. It's fucking amazing. I loved it to death. Now number one, you probably saw this coming. Dragon Age Inquisition. I have probably spent a good 40 hours playing that game. Holy shit, I, I've loved every minute of it. Some of it has kind of felt slow, and some of it I'm kind of like, eh, about, but I fucking... Mm -mm. This game has me, has got me. It, I'm going to play it for like 100 hours, probably. Right when I'm done this, I might go record some, but... Oh my god, I can't. Like, the graphics of the game, A+, plus, stellar. The gameplay, love it to death, it's amazing. Uh, The story... Oh, like, I can't even, like, I'm so involved in the story. Like, I'm I'm almost, like, freak. Every decision you have to make in the game, because it's a Bioware? Yeah, that's the company's name. It's a Bioware game, so you're like, oh, everything counts in some way. I can't say this or this person will get pissed. But uh, I always play those games like I'm actually the person, so fuck everyone else. I don't care what they think. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's such a great game, though. I can't even... I also get really invested for some reason in my mounts. And I'm just like, oh, I can't leave my horse. But then I have a dragon riding thing. Like, why would I... Why would I want a horse? So, I get really... I get emotional in those games. And there's some... You can make up your own stories, too. Like, I have made up my own backstory for my character. I know that sounds loserish, But it's such a good game where I'm like, oh, my God. No, no, no. My character was this before. And I don't care what the game says. I know my story. I know what I am. So, yeah. Top game of the year, fucking Dragon Age Inquisition, hands down, love it. Have devoted most of my time gaming this year, probably to that game already, and it hasn't even been out for like th three months. When every other game has been out for a long time, I know some of the others, most of the others are like storyline games, but and this one's an RPG where you can do shit tons of things in quests. But I mean, usually I'll spend a lot of time on a game like Far Cry 4, but I kind of put that aside for this game since I beat Far Cry 4. So yeah, so again, that was Thief at number 12, Broken Age at 11, Assassin's Creed Unity at 10, Lego Movie Video Game at 9, uh, Outlast Whistleblower at 8, uh, where are you, 7, Alien Isolation at 7, Destiny at 6, where are you, 5, <laughs> Little Big Planet at 3 at 5, Far Cry 4 at 4, Advanced Warfare at 3, Wolfenstein the New Order at 2, and Dragon Age Inqu Inquisition at 1. So it was a good year for games, in my opinion. It was a little lackluster in other regards since, like, I don't know. Like, some game, like a lot of games came out unfinished and glitchy. Uh, a lot of them had weak stories, too, at, in the end, especially for some reason. Um, I don't know. Hope I'm hoping 2015 is great. Yay! I probably will be. So, thank you guys for watching. This has been Sam's List of Games. For 2014, hopefully 2015 is fucking great too. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.